Alaska Airport, my home airport, and coming in to get fuel today in a Lance Air is... My name is uh, Doug Johnson. I'm from uh, Jacksonville, Florida. Been uh, flying my Lance Air for 23 years now since I finished building it over a five year span. And I uh, like to get my gas down here. Excellent. And he's here to get gas. And as you can see, this is a, uh, is that a 4-P? It's 4-P, it's pressurized. It's pressurized. Uh, all planes are best at something. The moniker for the Lance Air 4-P is that it's the world's fastest single engine, piston powered four passenger aircraft. Uh, I built it for a specific mission. I live here in Florida, but many years ago, I was doing my reserve duty in the Air Force in Northern California. And uh, two years in a row, the uh, commercial airlines lost my luggage, so I decided I was gonna get my own airplane to fly out there. <laughs> so it took me so long to build it. I only did that mission once before I retired from the reserves, but it was a fun trip anyway. It was nine and a half flight hours from Florida to San Francisco uh, in this plane, which isn't bad for a small six banger. And what kind of flight characteristics do you see in this airplane? Well, it's uh, the speed you get is mostly from altitude. Uh, the, it's a very slick aircraft. Lance Niebauer, who designed it, tried to get rid of as many uh, rivets and uh, obstructions to airflow as you can imagine. It's uh, got laminar flow wings back to about 70% of cord. You can see the speed brakes back here are still fully effective way back here. And uh, when you deploy those, it either gives you a 30 knot slow up in speed or a 15 foot, uh, 1500 foot a minute sink rate. The flaps are fully slotted Fowler flaps. So even though it goes fast, it also has good low speed characteristics. The stall speed is about 63 knots. So I fly the pattern at 100 and come across the fence at about 90. And what's your normal cruise at, uh, say, 10,000 and 17,000? Yeah, about 10,000, and I booked for about uh, 220 knots. And at uh, 20, 24,000, um, at 65% lean of peak, I drew out about 260-some knots. 75% rich of peak at flight level 240, when the engine was new anyway, it was about 291 knots true. Oh my goodness, Yeah, so that's outstanding. It's pretty quick at the time, but I found I'm not in that much of a rush anymore, so <laughs> I like to fly Lena Peak. The fuel burn goes down from uh, 22 and a half to 15.9 gallons per hour, so the range far exceeds my bladder capacity. <laughs> <laughs> outstanding. And uh, do you plan on keeping this? I imagine you do. I do, yeah. I, uh, I keep joking to my wife, we need another airplane, and she tells me to grow up. So I'm gonna be keeping this one probably forever. It's been in the air 23 years now, and uh, still has the original engine. I baby the engine. Firm believer in lean of peak operation, and uh, subscribe to the Mike Bush maintenance theory of engine management. Condition-based yeah. maintenance. Yes, and it's been, it's served me very well. Yes, yes. Well, thank you very much for giving us a short interview. It's a pleasure to have you down here in Palatka. And uh, I hope to see you again. I'm going to show the guys uh, sure. a little bit of the airplane. Yeah, please do. Uh, I will show you a couple things if you're interested. Yes. The, first of all, the panel, I started off as a steam gauge panel back in 1995 when I designed it. And back about four years ago, I switched to the full Garmin G3X setup with new autopilots and everything. And that's uh, be pretty embarrassing to get lost now with four independent GPS systems in there. <laughs> and I'll see something unusual you won't see in most planes if you turn around and just point it up at the rudder horn here. You see another little symbol up there. Radioactive. That's because instead of uh, lead, I did some work for the NRC and I got dispensation to use depleted uranium as my weight. Counterweight. Counter counter Twice the Z, so you need less weight <laughs> to counteract it. So the taking that two or three pounds off basically means that this airplane can never get to FCG if you keep it in its weight envelope. Okay. Uh, and that's one of the reasons the judge liked it at Oshkosh many years ago and at one of Lindy up there. But uh, What's the stall characteristics like? The stall is not very forgiving. Uh, that, that is something you need to, I fly this once a week to keep on top of it. Mm -hmm. um, it, it flies really well until it doesn't. And when mm -hmm. it doesn't, it really starts to come down hard. Um, one other thing I'll show you, before I made a modification, the Lance Air 4s were known for a stall. They'd immediately whip over onto their back from the right wing. And uh, fortunately, never got that far, but a series of experiments in Australia showed if you put this one little st stall fence on there, that our stall strip, that uh, basically makes both wings stall at the same time. So now when it stalls, it stalls straight ahead. So, Are they uh, differentiated in the distance from the root? No, it's all eight. It's a, 
Uh, it's about a foot long and it's it's about uh, 24 inches out from the uh, on both sides just one side you only need it on this one side oh, just on this side yeah to Austra keep it from the flip yeah the australians did a huge uh flight test study even though they're experimental the aussies made them go through a whole flight test program it turns out the problem was that this wing was still flying because of the wind coming off the prop when the other one wasn't in the stall and it would go over like that. Okay. So, if, so just lift. by stalling this one a little bit early, yeah, keeps it probably it. increases your stall speed by a knot or two, but it uh, keeps everything level. Makes the characteristics more controllable. Right. Right, exactly. Uh, what kind of engine is... Uh, it's got the Continental TSIO 550 B2B. TSIO 550, yeah. so 300 and... Uh, 350 horsepower. It's got twin Garrett turbochargers on it, which is where it gets the pressurization bleed air from. I've had fun flying it all over the map, from California to Maine to New York to Michigan to wherever. The longest I've ever flown it, again, keeping in mind my bladder capacity issues, the farthest, farthest I've ever flown it, it nonstop is from northern Florida to Salina, Kansas, because I always like to land with at least an hour of fuel right. in reserves in the tank, so that's just me. I, I don't do a whole lot of aerobatics with it. This is kind of a straight up and down cruiser. Um, when you do the flight test program, you have to demonstrate for the FA anything you may want it to do sometime in its life or it'll never be able to do it. So back when I had a total of 10 hours on the plane, I was doing aileron rolls when I had it, but I've never done one since. So. <laughs> no loops or anything like that. Doug, take me back to the uh, cockpit for a second. Yes. And uh, show me what you have in it. I'm going to have you get in front of me just to show me. Uh... Do you want me to sit in there? Yes, please. So here I have uh, two G3X displays, and this is the Garmin GTN 750 for navigation. This is the autopilot head, uh, and then I've got a completely independent backup GRT avionics um, primary flight display, and it also has a moving map in that as well. Uh, these are the cabin pressurization controllers, cabin altitude warning. Um, other than that, fairly standard. The overhead, got a chance to, this is what experimental means, this is 1992 Ford Explorer, <laughs> and the contacts for the pressure seal on the door is off a of Chrysler minivan. <laughs> <laughs> but they've been working well for 23 years, so I guess they were engineered pretty well. Now the pressure pressurization gauge, does it show you uh, the internal pressure? It basically shows you the cabin altitude, so I, you know, different people believe in different things. I believe there's only so many pressurization cycles in an airframe, so I will uh, allow the cabin altitude to get to 10,000 feet on a normal day, uh -huh. and then it pressurizes after that. So with that cabin altitude, when I'm flying at flight level 240, I'm using 3.4 psi differential, and I've ground tested it to 5.7 psi, which is where the pop-off valve goes. Okay. Excellent. Just resetting my fuel quantity. And there we have it. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you again for taking the time to talk with me. You're welcome. I love your bird. It's beautiful. Well, Absolutely thank you very beautiful. much. I appreciate that. And the work that you put in it, it's paid off. That's a lot of turtle wax over the years. <laughs> <laughs> it's the original paint. I'm here to uh, get the 310 annual uh, and uh, just saw him at the fuel pump and thought you guys might like to see him as well. Thank you again. Thank you. Take care now.